Thank you. Okay. Have you ever had that feeling as if you were running after a train, but you couldn't catch up? As if it was leaving you behind and getting away? That's how I used to feel two years ago. Hi, my name is Ananya Jen, and I am an overachiever. My biggest dream since the age of 12 has been to study law at Harvard University. And my biggest fear since probably the same age has been getting an A instead of an A+. I would and still do strive for perfection in every aspect of my academic life. I remember back in the seventh grade, my English teacher would allow us to redo any essays or assignments that we felt we could improve on and have them remarked. My hopeful Harvard bound self spent hours poring over an essay that I had gotten a very good on, trying to find the clue, that missing piece of the puzzle that would get me an excellent instead. I would then stay up till 1 a.m. putting the finishing touches on a math project that was due the very next day, only to break down into heartbroken tears because I was too tired to look over my notes for my biology final. My one chance to board the train to success was getting away, and I couldn't catch up. I wasn't on it. Hectic, I know, but in my mind, this was normal. I was in middle school now, so grades had to be the most important thing, right? What I didn't realize was that I was beginning to define myself by my grades. That was my mistake. I thought, the thing I'm good at is school, so it's obviously the only thing I can be good at. Does that sound familiar? You see, all of us unknowingly classify ourselves as a certain type of person. You know those American movies? The ones with the jock and the cheerleader and the nerd? It's kind of like that, just hopefully a little less extreme. Subconsciously, we all place ourselves into categories. Your reputation at school or work could be a reflection of this. Anything from, wow, he's so smart, to, oh my god, she's such a good soccer player, or, oh, she's an amazing artist. And because of these wonderful standout qualities that you are constantly told and reminded you have, you stop focusing on and developing the other ones, which are just as amazing. You start defining yourself by that single prominent quality. But the definition of a definition, according to dictionary.com, is the formal statement of the meaning or significance of a word, phrase, or idiom as found in dictionaries. I think it's safe to say that you are neither a word, nor a phrase, nor an idiom, and I'm pretty sure that we would not find you in a dictionary. So if nothing else I have said today has convinced you that you cannot be defined, I hope this will. You're constantly in the making, no matter how old you are. You're always evolving and discovering. You're undefined. Because we're all so multifaceted and we have so much potential, we just need to learn how to realize it. Thinking back on it now, I think my journey to this realization began when one of my seventh grade teachers actually told my parents that I was putting in too much work for that class. That's pretty unusual, right? But it was my first year at my current school, ISL, and I wanted to impress my teachers and my peers. So I had started focusing all of my time and all of my energy on my schoolwork. I was doing no sports and I had very few extracurriculars. I had put the rest of my life on hold. But today, two of my biggest passions are tennis and figure skating. And they're literally the only reason I'm even remotely sane during exam season. The way I feel when I step out onto the freshly resurfaced ice or when I hit that perfectly timed ace at tennis practice, right when the coach is watching, is a feeling I want to share with all of you. It's amazing. It takes some work to get there, but in the end, all of the effort, all of the time commitment, it's all for your mental and physical well-being. It's not just a way to improve your university portfolio or your CV, which are just added bonuses, by the way, but it's a way to de-stress. So my biggest advice to you is to find your outlet and remember the three Fs. Forget your fear of failure. Because we all have that one thing that we're amazing at. But when we're good at something, it's naturally stressful. Because we get so used to that feeling of security that comes with constantly excelling and never failing 
that we forget what it's like to fall, but we don't forget our fear thereof. So trying new things is naturally stressful for most people because we push ourselves so hard to keep up that high level of skill that we're used to that we stress ourselves out, we work ourselves to the bone, and we get so precariously close to the edge because we don't want to fall over. But if we're not afraid of falling, then it's not such a big deal. What I'm trying to say is, forget your fear of failure by finding your outlet. But it doesn't matter if you're not amazing at it. It can be anything from painting to writing, dancing or singing, mountain climbing, paragliding, bungee jumping even. But when it makes you smile, when it makes you focus on the moment, when it makes you feel good, that's how you'll know you've found it. That's how you'll know you've struck balance. And trust me, that is a pretty wonderful feeling. Thank you. <laughs>